Welcome to Healthy and Wealthy Conversations, where we discuss everything that leads to health and wellness for your whole spirit, soul, mind, and body. It is time for another Healthy and Wealthy Conversations. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's conversation is with Rachelle Davis. Let's get this show started. Um, well, the main thing I did want to speak to you today about was chronic fatigue syndrome. How did you end up um, in this field, this knowledge? How, um, how did you journey into this? Well, um, I was studying to be a health coach, and that was um, about 2012, 2013, and then I finally finished in 2014, got my certificate. And um, at that time, in particular, I just returned from working overseas as a civilian um, government contractor. So those hours were long, and it, my schedule was as such where I worked every day. I never had a day off. And we took R&R, which is like our rest time, every three to four months. That particular contract that I was on, I worked like 12 to 14 hours a day and I was at the end of my contract. So I was uh, basically at a six month stretch and I said, okay, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this out. I'm not gonna take vacation, just save money so that I can just go home and you know, have money in my account and just relax. So I did that, but at the same time, I also had this horrible supervisor. Um, I was working nights, so everything was off with me as far as, you know, normally people wake up during the day, go to bed at night. That was completely off my clock, my internal clock. And so I was under so much stress, you know, I thought that I was handling it, but you'd be surprised the body, you know, is resilient for only so long. So by the time I got back, I was feeling and experiencing everything. It, it finally caught up to me. And um, so I had went and saw a naturopath because I was like, you know, um, I wanted to start working out again. I'd been working out prior to that, probably months and months and months before that. But then I had stopped. And um, I was like, God, I can't lose weight. You know, I was eating healthy and everything and nothing was working. I was working out um, and I injured myself. I um, was having difficulty sleeping at night. So I wasn't able to adjust back to a regular schedule. And so um, I had decided that I was gonna move to Texas, to Houston. And at the time I, I came back, I was in New York with my mother and my family. And so I decided I was gonna move. Um, and then when I moved, I started, you know, at night, I'd wake up about three o'clock in the morning consistently. Um, all of a sudden I was getting hot flashes, okay? And so I went and saw an acupuncturist and, um, was a Chinese medicine doctor and this doctor was like, oh, maybe you're going through premenopause. I said, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not anywhere near the age. I was in my early forties. I'm like, no, I'm not. That's, that's not what it is. So, you know, she'd give me some herbs that those did not work. I went and saw my primary care because I'm a veteran. I went to the VA and um, the, the doctor took my blood pressure and she's like, oh, you're a little high. I said, what? That's never happened to me. My blood pressure is always low, right? So she's like, well, let me put you on a little bit of a, you know, pill. I said, no, I don't, I don't do medication or anything like that. I said, if I have an issue, I can address it myself. If I need to change something that I'm eating, then I can do that. Um, so I did that and it didn't really work or I'm not sure if I actually went back, but in any case, I ended up going to this seminar um, because 
I had just graduated um, with my certificate as a health coach. And I said, okay, well, let me start, you know, getting out there and start building my business. And so I went to a seminar and the seminar was on stress. Okay. And it was through that seminar and that doctor that offered you a free physical that I realized because he diagnosed me with the chronic fatigue and the one symptom that stood out um, was basically when you have chronic fatigue and um, usually when you're sitting down in the resting position, they take your blood pressure and that's when it should be low. And then standing up is considered the working position and that's when it should be high. Well, mine was reversed. So when I stood up, my blood pressure was low. When I was sitting, it was high. And, and that's how he was able to diagnose me amongst my other symptoms. And that's how I found out that I had chronic fatigue syndrome. Wow. Well, before I continue, I do like the fact that, so you were, I don't want to say sick, a little ill, Mm-hmm. And your health wasn't all the way there. And yet you said, let me start this health and wellness business. And so many people say, well, let me wait till I'm 1000% perfect. And I've got this and I've got that. Then I'll start my business. Instead, you said, I'm going to do this. And in starting your business is how you were able to get yourself well. And I don't think people understand starting is how you, how you get to what you want. So once you've been, you were diagnosed, what were some of the steps or tips or um, the, uh, whatever, uh, did you, were you, did that doctor suggest anyone to you to go to, or did you just go back to your, the VA and tell them, this is what I have, what, what do I do? No, I didn't go back to the VA for that because typically with chronic fatigue syndrome, that's not something normally that um, a physician would even catch you know, because they look at all the other symptoms and they assume based on that, you know, based on my high blood pressure, she's assuming that I, I definitely have high blood pressure. I have, you know, hypertension or something like that. And that wasn't the case. Okay. Based on my, um, waking up three o'clock in the morning, you know, having hot flashes, whatever that doctor, which was an acupuncturist as well, assume that, oh, I must be going through, you know, premenopause or whatever. That wasn't the case, you know? So doctors will typically only go so far, you know, depending on who you go to. Um, It's not something that's diagnosable necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, hypertension or, um, I don't know, um, cancer or, you know what I mean? Something Mm -hmm. like that, that we're used to, you know, um, hearing about. Um, So I knew that based on my symptoms that there were changes that I needed to make as far as the food that I ate and not like, oh yeah, I gotta go on a diet. It wasn't that per se. It's certain foods that you needed to incorporate and certain foods that you needed to um, take out. And sugar was one thing that I had to eliminate, okay? Because I would eat, um, I tried it. I said, oh, well, let me eat this brownie, thinking that I could do things like normal, you know, like every day. And it didn't work like that because after I ate that brownie, within 20 minutes, I was so fatigued. I had to take a nap. I had to take a nap, you know? So, um, that and also lifestyle changes. You can't exercise like you would normally. You know, that's, you just can't. And so I had to bring my body back into balance, Um, not through medication, that wasn't gonna work, but just holistically uh, through lifestyle and a specific diet. Okay, so basically, so before I, I, go, I move forward, I'm kind of surprised because I do remember there was an episode of the Golden Girls back in, I guess, either the 80s or the 90s where Dorothy is experiencing the symptoms of chronic fatigue. And at the end of the episode, she finally finds a doctor who's able to 
give her what she needs. And he goes, well, I'm not an expert on it. I'll give you information. So the fact that that was just starting in the 80s and the 90s, I would have thought by now that, you know, more doctors would know about it, more doctors would understand about it. So I'm assuming definitely your work played a part in it and um, also changing your time zone, moving in Mm -hmm. a different time zone. So it's um, most, I guess it's mostly caused by, I guess, things we do. So to, so to speak, as far as um, chronic fatigue, not getting enough rest, not eating rightly. Um, so did you just do research or did you go somewhere to get this information or did you just figure it out for yourself? Well, yeah, I did research. Um, the acupuncturist wanted to continue to give me treatments. And I was like, well, I'm not paying for all these treatments. Um, I love acupuncture. I really do. But I said, you know what? I can figure this out. <laughs> I can definitely figure this out. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you have to figure it out when it comes to your adrenals and it's affecting your hormones. And so from there, I put things together. Yeah, I did my research on what to eat, what not to eat and, and how food was going to affect me. And, um, it's there. I think the biggest issue is that people one, they don't have the support. They don't have a plan. Um, you have to be very regimented in trying to overcome this. It doesn't happen overnight. So you have to have patience. You have to just, um, you have to keep trying. You know what I mean? You can't give up and you can't think, okay, well, this week I'm good. I did all this. And then next week you think you're going to be good. And the body just doesn't work like that. You have to give it time to recover. Um, but what I've found is a lot of people, oh, well, I heard this is going to help me and give me energy. Um, let me try this, or let me take this, or, you know, you have to just have a plan, you know, and you have to stick to it. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, people will try, but guess what? There's millions of people that are dealing with chronic fatigue syndrome and some for many years, some never get the help they need. And it, to me, I'm just like, wow, this just doesn't make sense. Like you said, if doctors really were um, that educated and well-versed on this particular syndrome, then there wouldn't be millions of people suffering from it all around the world and they wouldn't be suffering from it for years on end. Some people, it's like they never find the relief because they don't understand that you have to have a plan and you have to stick to a regimen. You can't give up and you can restore your body. I'm, I'm proof of that because I did it. Well, I'm definitely a fan of, um, those who have experienced as opposed to, you know, when, when we say things like, oh, well, do, you know, how, um, who do I go to? What degree do they have? And I'm like, well, if they've never experienced what you've had, they, even with a degree, they can't help you. And so for those who are watching, who find themselves as all the symptoms, she said, constantly tired. Um, if you're a woman, maybe going through early, um, um, menopause or anything of that nature, contact her because she's experienced it all so she can help you. So now you offer health coaching services. Is that you coach people, you teach people to coach or a little bit of both? No, I don't teach people to coach. I am a coach. So I'm coaching people through their health and wellness journey. That's what I do. Yes. And, and if, so, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, gonna... if, um, If a client comes to you, what exactly are expected of them and what can they expect from you? Well, first thing we're going to do is do a um, health history, a consultation. And then we will, once they fill that paperwork out, we'll go through everything um, on that form that they filled out. And then, of course, we'll find out exactly why they feel they're looking for a coach. And then... I will devise some sort of plan of action for them to follow. And then we will meet once a month 
Um, I will provide them with supportive material, um, recipes, different lifestyle um, ideas that they can embark upon. And then um, basically in that hour long session, we'll just be discussing everything surrounding their habits and um, how we can change them, you know, how to move in the direction of um, the healthy lifestyle that they're looking to achieve. Cool. Now I have two more questions. I'm like all over the place. I'm kind of like ADHD here. So going backwards, um, you do, I see you here have a chronic fatigue course. Is that something they can take immediately or is it something they sign up for and then like on a particular date, they do like a live session with you? Um, well, that is something they can do if, if that's something they would like to do. Um, or also with that, I'm offering coaching, but they can just do the coaching. Um, it's just something extra that I thought that I would add because I know some people enjoy um, maybe watching videos and, and taking a course, but the point is to provide a means of support. So it just depends on the individual and what they prefer. Okay, and rewinding some more, only mm -hmm. because I, you mentioned that you have to be off sugar. And um, as of now, I am off sugar for, um, I did a, a three week fast from sugar. And then when I got back to it, I started getting sick. So every time I consume sugar, I get really sick. So one, I've seen so many fads out there of, you know, um, going on a sugar-free diet, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that's never mentioned, well, at least I've never seen it, is the seriousness of the fact that because drug, uh, sugar is considered a drug, there is a um, withdrawal process, and that if you're not careful, you can relapse a few times. Um, did you go through the, um, did you experience anything you thought was, I would say, odd or challenging during the process of you stopping the sugar? Um, I don't know. I think that for the most part, when it comes to people in sugar, um, you're eating sugar for a reason. So it's kind of important to address that reason. And nutritionally, you want to really address it by providing whatever it is that you might be missing in your diet. Um, you could be, I don't know, you could be low on B vitamins, for example. Um, that's what kind of induces the cravings of sorts, okay? So you wanna make sure you're getting the right amount of uh, minerals and, and vitamins in your diet, and you won't crave that stuff. You know, you won't crave sugar or Sometimes, I don't know, could be carbs. Um, sometimes people, they'll be craving chocolate. Maybe they haven't had enough carbs. Um, you know, it's just different things like that. So I, that's kind of like an understanding I've come to, um, come to over time. Um, yeah, you know, when I had that brownie, yeah, I must have been craving sugar because I went for it. But then shortly after that, I saw what the repercussion was um, after consuming that brownie. And that was enough for me to be like, okay, you know, this is a bit much. So I'm going to have to back up off of that, you know? So I think it's all about knowing your body and um, just being in tune to how you feel, how you felt and so forth, the difference before and after and during, you know what I mean? Right. That does make sense now because I know I, I learned a while ago that we don't crave, our body doesn't crave food, it craves the nutrients and that it, what it does is if it needed calcium, for instance, mm -hmm. and it got it from the ice cream you ate, when it craves it again, if it doesn't get it the way it wants it, like spinach or kale, it'll just say, well, give me that ice cream because I need calcium. And so your body craves where it got the calcium, not necessarily 
the food, if you know what I mean. And so I guess when you are craving sugar, it's because you, whatever you ate, there was something in there, uh, some type of nutrient in there that your body is craving for the nutrient, not necessarily the the food that you eat. So I'm definitely right. going to research that so I can start um, because I'm good now. The problem is if um out somewhere and someone oh I got donuts and it's like oh <laughs> no I don't want any and it's like what is just sit there on the table and it's free for all that's the problem so it's that, like oh so that's probably more um emotional um eating because you could be bored you know what I mean I'm bored right. let me find a snack you know what I mean that type of thing maybe grab some water first and see if you can't you know, satisfy that, you know, whatever that is, your boredom, grab some water, you know, you, you got to try, you know, a whole bunch of healthy stuff before you get to the, the donuts, I guess, or just, or be prepared. That's another thing. Um, you have to prepare the time when it comes to food to have something healthy standing by. So then when you do crave something, you have something and it's not necessarily you just saying, oh, let me just grab this because it's quick, convenient, or even though it's full of fat and sugar that I don't need, you know? Yes, that's, that's definitely helpful. Thank you. And I, mm-hmm. I hope it's, it's, it's not just helpful for me. I hope it's helpful for anyone who may be watching. Um, just one more thing, just to um, touch base. I also see here you, um, you have aromatherapy and soccer, soccer balancing, what exactly are these and how do they um, assist in someone's health? Oh, so I, I do make jewelry. Um, I use essential oils. I have um, bracelets that I make and depending on the stones, they're supportive of different characteristics that a person has or they're looking to um, enhance, okay? Um, and then the aromatherapy does the same thing because it's essential oils, that type of thing. I make a um, hydrosol um, that's got essential oils and also different um, stones in there as well. So um, it just depends on what you might be going through or what you're trying to support yourself emotionally or whatnot. And um, so I make jewelry according to that type of need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, just two more things. Um, can you give some words of empowerment and encouragement? Because nowadays when you say healthy or getting in shape or getting doing better, you know, January just came in, everyone has resolutions. Um, starting next week, many people are going to forget their resolutions and, you know, they're going to go back. Give some words to people to under, um, for them to not make it a resolution, not make it a trend, not make it a, I'm saying this so I look good, realizing how important their health is, how they want to look at it differently than we've had been looking at health overall? Well, um, I guess these past two years should really resonate with everybody because um, everybody isn't as healthy as they thought they might have been, or maybe they weren't thinking about it at all. Um, And so a lot of people are getting sick and it's taking some people a little bit longer to recover. Some are perishing, some are not, you know, making it at all. But I think that you have got to take things seriously at this point, okay? So if you've been putting stuff off, you know, trying to make a change or, you know, you want to start exercising, now's the time to do it. Um, making a resolution, I don't see any point in that personally. Either you're going to do it or you're not. So you can't sit there and say, okay, well, I'm going to do this once the new year starts. No, you start right away. Um, So if you want to see a change, you have to be that change. That means you have to take action. So you have to be serious about taking that action. Um, Now, for some people, it's not easy. So all I can say, if you feel that you need support, then get the support you need. Hire a health coach. That's what I'm here for, okay? 
and and take your health seriously because you never know, you know, when somebody's going to be here and when they're not, or if their health is going to decline. So if you have questions about that, or you know, you need some guidance, you need some ideas, then you need to reach out um, because I think that this. I'll call it a pandemic um, is going to go away the way people want it to. People want everything. Oh, can we just get back to normal? It's not going to get back to normal. And um, there's a whole, I'm sure there's more variants that are about to come out um, with this whole thing that's going on currently. Um, so, I mean, my family's been sick. I didn't go visit my family this year, so I didn't get sick, but everyone else got sick. And um, all I can say is start taking your health seriously, okay? If you need help, reach out. My mother calls it a pandemic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, I would say don't pay attention so much to the news, pay attention to, um, Journals, science journals, and well, the this things is the thing that, with the news. <laughs> well, what I'm they're saying paid is, to say, yeah, they're paid right. to say whatever. Well, the mm -hmm. things that they're saying in the news don't equal the things that have been written in science journals. That's so true. they, and because science, science journals was kind of like a magazine. When you think of magazine, most people are thinking gossip magazines, you know, entertainment magazines. So because they know most people won't take the time to read a science journal they're okay with not matching up because they know most people won't see that. So I would definitely tell people get subscriptions to science magazines and journals because what science says is not equaling up to what they are saying. Um, and, and another thing about science, they're, they're saying trust the science, right? But not think for yourself. But science doesn't even work like that. that that's what I mean. When they say trust the science, what they're calling science is not actually science. Mm -hmm. Like I said, but because people don't read science journals, they don't know that. And the, they, they, they'll publish it in a book and in a magazine what science is. Mm -hmm. They just don't verbalize what they publish. So definitely do more reading than watching the news. Um, any last <laughs> yeah. thing? I mean, they, sure. it's, 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 it's one of those things when you start, my Angela said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. The thing is, though, you have to know the truth before they show you who they are. Otherwise, you won't notice they're not being truthful. So when you research science, you can, it's, it's, you can see it. it you can see it. Right. It um, becomes apparent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very easy to see. Um, so I do have um, an offer to the listening audience. If, awesome. If I yes. can share that. Go ahead. Um, so if the audience would like a discovery call. Um, I'm giving that about 15 minute discovery call away for free. And I also have a gift, um, a seven day challenge planner as well um, for anybody who's interested. All you have to do is email me at askahealth at gyhlife.com. That's my web, um, my email. Ask a health at gyhlife.com. And um, in the subject, just put discovery call. And then I'll um, email you a free seven day challenge planner and I'll send you an appointment link if you're interested in a discovery call. Thank you so much for that offer. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything um, final you would like to tell the listeners or um, even those who may be future clients of yours? Um, I think I pretty much said it, um, don't wait, um, to start, you know, on your health or whatever it is that you want to change. Um, definitely, um, deal with any stress you have in your life. I can tell you that from experience, you, you definitely want to deal with that because stress can affect your body in so many different ways. And, um, you know, it's just, something you don't want to put off. Okay. Because a lot of people that have gotten ill have had a lot of, um, 
what um, conditions prior to you know getting ill, which actually weakens their immune system. And another thing that weakens your immune system that I want to tell people is fear. Fear mm -hmm. weakens the immune system. So when they put all this stuff out in the news to put you in and keep you in that state of fear, they know what they're doing, okay? They're weakening people's immune systems. And so like we were speaking about before about not knowing, you know, and maybe not reading the science journals and not understanding how things actually work, that keeps you in a state of fear too because you're relying on them for information and they're not trustworthy because they have an agenda. So, you know, that's just something to think about. Maybe some people never, you know, realized that before, but fear does weaken the immune system. And, um, you know, the result is what we're seeing now, so. I'm so glad you shared that. I did not know that. I will say though, in the t when you are in, because this is not not just this time. If you have cancer, you have AIDS, you have whatever. In that moment, in that room, when they give you diagnosis, it's not the time to use fear. And unfortunately, most times, in that moment is when if you don't do this right away, you're going to die. You only have two months to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like I don't understand. That's not. They, they're already feeling down. To throw that at them, it doesn't make things better. And I don't understand why. I do understand why they use fear. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, do, yeah. I mean, I do. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I guess you can say I don't understand why people don't understand people who use fear know what they're doing. When, you know, certain oh, yeah. like gang members, mafia, when they use fear, they know what they're doing and they, they understand why they're doing it. And it's like a power and control thing. And in for the medical industry, it's it's a money thing. So very much so. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I greatly appreciate thank it. Thank you. All for the information me. those are watching will be in popping up during the show as well as it'll be in the description. Mm -hmm. below. Great. Thank you again. Thank you. I want to thank Rachel Davis for stopping on by and sharing. I had a wonderful conversation with her on healthy and wealthy conversations. Please join us again next week for more conversations, healthy and wealthy conversations. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.